Onk Live Insights is a video editorial program produced by Onk Live. When patients are re receive initial treatment with crizotinib, one of the clear mechanisms of resistance to crizotinib is mutations in the ALK gene. These mutations can be targeted with these second and third generation ALK inhibitors. So we've talked about we talk about seritinib as the FDA approved um, ALK inhibitor. We've seen a lot of data on electinib as well as brigatinib. Electinib is another ALK inhibitor. Their side effect profile is somewhat different from seritinib, and the mutation inhibition profile is somewhat different as well. The data we have thus far looks at patients who've had prior crizotinib and looks at their, the effectiveness of electinib in that patient population. It looks to be uh, an effective drug in that patient population with response rates and progression-free survival like we hope to see for patients with oncogene-driven cancers. Response rates above 50 percent and median progression-free survival is approaching a year. So I think electinib is going to be a great option uh, for our patients with non-small cell lung cancer who have ALK gene rearrangements. I think the side effect profile is a bit of a different uh, story from seritinib, and it may be a bit easier to tolerate, though we're going to have to see in how this really is in clinical practice. When we think about these next generation ALK inhibitors, sometimes the question is how can we move these into first line therapy? Just as we consider second and third line chemotherapies and moving them into first line, we also think about this for targeted therapies. The ALEX trial is a trial that takes patients with ALK positive lung cancer and for their first line ALK inhibitor, randomizes them to either crizotinib or electinib. And it, this, does, this trial is really designed to see what's the most effective first line ALK inhibitor. I think an important component of this is looking at those patients who are, receive initial crizotinib and then go on to electinib. Which is better? Is it to get crizotinib first, followed by electinib, or to get electinib as your first line therapy? I think there's going to be a lot of subset analyses from this trial, and it's going to be really important to dictate how we treat patients with ALK positive lung cancer going forward. In addition to seritinib, there are actually a number of other next generation ALK inhibitors that are all being studied in the setting of crizotinib resistance. Uh, there are at least uh, eight next generation ALK inhibitors out there, including seritinib. We've heard some data recently on um, one of them called brigatinib. Um, its previous name was AP26113. Um, it's a, an ALK inhibitor made by Ariad. Um, like seritinib, it's very potent in inhibiting ALK, more potent than crizotinib. Um, it also has some activity against ROS1 and a few other targets as well. So brigatinib has been studied in a uh, phase 1-2 study, and the data has been reported uh, most recently at the World Lung Cancer Conference uh, by Dr. Gettinger. And this ALK inhibitor, like seritinib, is showing very promising activity in patients who have failed crizotinib. In fact, the activity of brigatinib is Brigatinib is even potentially higher, although these are all single arm trials, um, so it's a little difficult to compare. But what we've seen in this phase one study of brigatinib is that the response rate among crizotinib resistant patients is very high, higher than 70%. And the median progression free survival, again, in this single arm study of the brigatinib compound was exceeding 12 months. So quite, quite a long and impressive uh, response that we see with a next generation ALK inhibitor brigatinib after crizotinib failure. However, brigatinib is interesting in, in that it has a toxicity that none of the other ALK inhibitors have shown, which is an early pulmonary toxicity. And this is really distinct from interstitial lung disease, which we're all very familiar with. Um, TK, TKIs as a class can cause interstitial lung disease. This is different because this can occur and typically does occur after a single dose of the brigatinib compound. And I would say a typical example would be a patient is dosed in the clinic and then later that evening, it's probably about eight or 10 hours later, they become short of breath, they may be coughing more. And that actually can progress to uh, severe respiratory symptoms and even respiratory failure. Fortunately, it's only been seen in a small percentage of patients, less than 10%, um, but it, is, uh, it has been consistently reported now from a number of different sites, and so I believe it is a real toxicity of this drug that is unique. And so I think this drug does require extra close monitoring of patients uh, when they first start on it. 
There are other uh, next generation ALK inhibitors um, in addition to seritinib, electinib, and brigatinib. We heard, heard at World Lung uh, and ASCO this year about the newest of the next generation ALK inhibitors. This is uh, a new ALK inhibitor developed by Pfizer. Um, Pfizer makes crizotinib, and now they have their own next generation ALK inhibitor, which now has a name, lorlatinib, um, previously called PF6463922. Again, a phase one study has been done focusing in on patients with ALK or ROS1 rearranged lung cancer. And the data from the phase one is very promising. Uh, now, many of these patients who enrolled on the phase one had failed not only crizotinib, but in some cases, uh, multiple ALK inhibitors. And we actually saw that the response rate uh, to this new lorlatinib compound in this heavily pretreated population was about 50%. So these patients are potentially responding to even a third or fourth line ALK inhibitor. Overall, uh, the toxicity of lorlatinib was, was, fairly, uh, was fairly good, um, meaning fairly, fairly mild side effects. I would say this drug also has some unique uh, side effects that have not been seen with other ALK inhibitors. Um, one of the most common ones that we see in almost every patient treated with lorlatinib is uh, an increase in cholesterol and triglycerides, and we're not sure what the mechanism is, but most patients will end up going on to a statin therapy for this. And then the other somewhat unique side effect we've seen with orlatinib is some mild neurocognitive side effects, including slowing of the speech, uh, or feeling like the memory um, is not as good or as sharp as before, or recall not as quick. Um, and so this is something that's important to note um, with this drug in particular. This drug has been developed and optimized to penetrate into the central nervous system to help address the problem of CNS relapses. And that's probably why we're seeing some of these mild neurocognitive side effects emerge.